first company auxiliary was formed in the 1920s and was known as the Sister Organization. The present day auxiliary was formed in about 1984 and at that time we were still located in downtown Charlestown. The, uh, apparently the earlier fire uh, sister organization was made up just of women. However, today our 18 active members are not only women but we also have men who assist us. The purpose of the auxiliary is to assist the fire company in whatever way that we can and this includes fundraising. Most of our fundraisers are kind of a joint thing because we have a food trailer and if we're going to go out and say to an auction we depend on the men to get us there, set it up and sometimes they actually like arts and crafts come in and work in the trailer with us. Probably the biggest activity that we assist them with is bingo. We have nine members who show up most every Monday night to assist them and we do everything from working the door to working in the kitchen and anything else that they need us to do. Um, some of the activities that we participate in as a fundraiser have been made easier since the men bought the trailer, the food trailer for us. We uh, now participate in arts and crafts, rants and days, um, tractor pulls, or I mean truck pulls, not tractor pulls. Uh, we uh, go to auctions and serve breakfast and lunch at the auctions. And also, we prepare meals for organizations at the fire hall. It's a lot of work, but it's also a lot of fun. Now, if you can imagine being real, real intelligent and taking your trailer to Shepherdstown the night before a big auction so that everything is there and ready and then getting there in that morning and realizing the key to the trailer is back in Charlestown at the fire hall. And we have a lot of these kind of little episodes. I mean, you know, we have fun with them. They, we have one member that they call the Energizer Bunny because she never stops. And uh, we've, we have come up with a lot of little mishaps along the way that if we couldn't laugh, uh, we got down to Ransom Days this past year and they hooked the trailer up and they hooked the water up and when they turned the water on we flooded the trailer because some a pipe had broken and nobody was aware of it. So you know we have a lot of fun but the auxiliary is a way for those who are not able to physically or due to age or other conditions to be an active fire person or an active EMS person, but yet we can come in and we can support the firemen and the EMS S personnel through making money or just assisting them with anything it is that they need that is within our realm of ability. We normally present them a check uh, at the beginning of our of the year when we have our annual banquet and also we buy things throughout the year that are needed for the fire hall. So if you want to support the volunteers but you know that you can't be an active firefighter or an active EM personnel, please seek out the auxiliary. Uh, this is an excellent way. We work hard and we have fun. Uh, people have always been hungry all through time as when they're fighting fires and, and, and things like that. Uh, Alice, uh, how has it changed since the first days uh, when you joined the auxiliary or when you helped begin it? How, how, have your, how have your roles changed and they've had things like this back to the 20s? Mm -hmm. Well, I guess we are probably more now of an interactive group. Um, the fire company considers us one of them just like they do anybody else and like I said before many of our activities are united one can't we can't do our activities without the help of the fire side and there are they couldn't run bingo without the help of the auxiliary so I think probably the biggest change has been the interaction between the two uh, what happens when you get a uh you know, there have been fires that have gone on for more than a day. Uh, what what happens on the auxiliary side when something like that starts? How does, okay. how does it when, go? If it's a big fire that's going to go on for a long time, 
they normally will contact headquarters and headquarters calls me and we have been very we've been very lucky that the businesses in town have been very supportive and furnish us like McDonald's furnishing hamburgers we go to the pizza places and they serve pizza to us and now Fortunately, we have not had to do it because we've not had these type of fires like when the turf burned and when they had the big fire up on the mountain. But if it was an extremely bad fire, we would probably have somebody take the food trailer to the site and there we could prepare food for the fire, uh, firefighters. What was an example of that, a fire that that was done? Well, when uh, the turf motel was burning, uh, of course, we didn't have the food trailer at that time, but we went around to the various... McDonald's was a big help with that because mm -hmm. they were right across the street, and they furnished us some breakfast items. And uh, also, when there was a big fire up on the mountain several years ago, and all of the fire companies were involved in it, uh, the different auxiliaries, not only ours, but uh, the uh, ones on the mountain and all, we went around and collected uh, sandwiches and pizzas and this type of thing and took it to the to the site and so that the men could have something to eat. Everybody helps out. Yeah, everybody helps out. Uh, do people? Why do people uh, want to join the auxiliary? If I may ask. Well, I joined because my husband was very active in the fire company for a number of years. But I will have to say that right now, 98% of the people in our auxiliary do not have anyone who is involved in the fire company. They do it because they know our people are volunteers and they want to help. And like I said before, we're not able to be capable of being active firefighters or active EMS personnel, but we can certainly be there to support them. Uh, any thoughts on the, the people of Jefferson County? You see how people behave when there's a fire. I mean, uh, uh, are the people of Jefferson County understanding of what the needs are during a fire? Oh, I think they most of them are. I know there have been fires uh, where the local, it would be close to a, a local community, and they would jump in and make sure the firefighters had water and anything that they needed they will come and serve and help the uh, and it's not just the independent fire company they will you know when we have a fire almost everybody responds and so they are very willing to help out uh, you've seen a lot you, you know the, the county well and you've been to a lot of uh, uh, fire events is there anything else uh, Ms. Clendenning that you'd like to add to, to tell people well, I think the, the main thing is that we have to realize that these men and women who are putting their life on the line are volunteers. They need our help, whether it be financial support or whether it be just showing up to help make sure they have what they need at the fire scene. Uh, I was just reading the paper and there was a wonderful article in there by Dot Blue for the fire that they had out at Lee Town and how wonderful they responded. And the, and she brought out the fact that, you know, they put their life on the line every time they go out. Uh, we've been very fortunate that we've not lost but a one that I know of in a fire, and that was when Miller Chemical was burning. We lost one of our firefighters. Uh, but we have had in some injuries. Uh, I don't think people realize how much training these firefighters have to go through and EMS personnel. It's not like it used to be where you just went out and jumped on the back of the truck and went to the fire. They spend hours and hours in training. Uh, and they have a training place out on the Lee Town Road by the fairgrounds. And they can spend days out there just training for their safety and to help the people of the community so that they know what they're doing when they get to a fire scene.